Hi, and welcome to the Sportsman Show. My, my name is Joseph Musil, the host of the show, along with my um, good buddy, Jason DeCarolis, a.k.a. Kochi. We're coming for you from Zoom for Nutmeg Television. Say hi, Kochi. Hi, everybody. It's Sunday, June 28th. Um, I hope everyone got to do their stuff and everything this week as we approach the holiday. Um, just to remind everybody that we are doing a special Friday show to collaborate the 4th of July weekend holiday special. So it will be sometime in the afternoon on that Friday. Yes, we will on Friday sometime in the afternoon. I got the day off from work. We'll, we'll do something special for that day. We'll talk about the 4th of July a little bit more and stuff and mm -hmm. how the tradition of sports on the 4th of July. You know, and that normally happens. Normally happens. Um, and then, and then of course, you may get lucky during. I, I, but unfortunately, I did have to take. Um, I had to move the vacation day. I was able to keep that Friday, but they had me going into work on the Fourth of July, so it wasn't too happy. So I had to move my vacation day to take. They had you working on the Fourth of July. Six to eleven thirty. But oh. I got a good excuse. It was going to be six to twelve, and I said it's not going to work. No. So. So you got it off. Well, so, I got, so I got part of the fourth part, off. Part of the fourth off. But you're not going to miss much. There's no lake compounds fireworks. There's no. no – there's really no fireworks to speak of. So unless you want to no. go to – unless you want to go to New Britain, go pay $10 at, the, at a drive-in, I think, is how that's going to work. Um, actually, I've heard those drive-ins um, actually were doing pretty good. Um, in Berlin, they, they got the drive-in and stuff. They – um. They're doing the car loads and stuff like that. So I heard that's doing pretty good. It gives, gives people something to do at nighttime, you know? I think they said on July 5th they got fireworks going in Waterbury also. Yeah, I, yeah, they're still doing um, that in Waterbury. But, but like yeah. I said, for late compounds, as much as everyone's disappointed, I think it's the right call because on a Saturday night it was just going to be too many people. Yeah, I I think so too. And there's no way that you're going to turn away people at that, you know, why do it at half capacity? Correct. It you know, or a quarter, the yeah. The whole, the whole parking lot would be full of people on the side of the road watching the fireworks. Anyway. Yep, that's true too. And they would have that whole area filled. So, people. All right, our first topic today, we normally talk about baseball, but that comes later. Right now, we want yep. to talk about our local golf tournament. So, Joe, I'll let you talk about it first. All right, the Travelers Championship. We've had uh, four days of the Travelers Championship. We're talking about it's not over yet. It, they're going to resume at 6.15. They got a little rain delay t today, but I believe this tournament has um, gone very well. It's, it's, um, all the golfers seem to be enjoying themselves. They've, it, they've golfed pretty well. The, um, golf courses, um, allowed them to score, allowed them to enjoy themselves. I'm not an average golfer. I can't really speak too much about playing golf, but it, it does look like they're, they're enjoying themselves. You know, um, it doesn't look like they're struggling. It doesn't look like they're um, hitting their balls into the trees and stuff like that, and have to hit a really difficult shot. I haven't, I haven't seen too many like amazing shots in this tournament, but I've seen decent shots happen. And um, we got our leader, uh, Dustin Johnson from America, at twenty under. I, I believe he – I've seen him um, today. I think he's controlling the course. He's not pushing himself too much. And he's just having – he's controlling the tempo. So I think he has a good chance to win and follow this up with a win. So what do you got, Coachy? Well, right, right now, um, <clears throat> the, there's really only two players – who can well actually one because uh, Will Gordon finished and he finished at 17 under par. The next person who can catch him is Kevin Streelman, who yep. he's um, 18 under par and he still has two holes to go. To me, if Dustin Johnson's going to win this, just don't get crazy and don't put the don't put the ball in the water hazard because there is a couple holes where that little 
that little uh, lake. I, damage, I believe that's the uh, 18th. That I, thought was, that, I, thought was I thought it was connected. I thought it was connected to 17 and 18. Yeah I, yeah, I think it's like in the middle almost of both of them. Yeah, so, but you don't want to get too crazy because if you put the ball in the hazard a couple times, it can change real quick. That's so true. You, two shot lead, you know, you just want to play smart and just play par out golf. Don't don't try and go overkill trying to make another birdie. Let your opponent below you try and make the most difficult shots that you can at this point. Yep. Yep. You That's know, good strategy. That's good it's, strategy. It's the only way to do it. But um Mackenzie Hughes um was the best player from out of Europe who won first round, 10 under par. Unfortunately, he went five under par for the rest of the week. Yep. Um, another one that I was watching, Phil Mickelson, uh, second round that he had was was very good. And then unfortunately, yep. he did struggle a little bit. I mean, the third round. Uh, the third he round, he also. struggled. He, he, he started um, really okay, but then yeah. after that, he had some trouble with it. I think he lost his momentum. And then he was like, He got okay. too excited when he was winning. Yeah, yeah, he was winning. And then he lost his momentum. And then he was like, okay, I'm just going to play golf and enjoy myself. I'm not going to be able to win. I'm just going to enjoy myself. I'm here Absolutely. in Connecticut. Yep. Um, now, the bad news is, unfortunately, a couple of golfers pulled out. The McElroy brothers were two of them. Yep. Um, and then there were a couple others who decided to pull out because their caddies were tested. Now, one, Jason Day was tested negative. Yes. So he, he actually tested. had to play his own caddy, meaning he had to carry his own golf clubs around. Yep. You know, of course, it doesn't help with your back or shoulder, but. Yeah, but. And mm. that, being, yeah, a, yeah mm. being a caddy, you know, if you watch Caddy Shack. <laughs> It's it's a hard job and stuff. It's it's not and easy. Not only that, he helps the golfers tell you how many yards you are away from the flag stick. Yep, he helps. He coaches the golfers and stuff. He's he is like a, co a coach. So but. yep, but sometimes you know it isn't doesn't get that successful. But you know, with the scores being like they have been all week, yeah, okay, that's pretty good score. I mean, yeah, a lot of people are saying. Why are these people 20, 25, 30 under par? Uh, well, I, I believe this golf course gives you a chance to hit the ball in the fairway yep. and set yourself up very well. Um, the greens looked like when you hit the greens, they were soft. The ball didn't and roll they were as moving. much. Yeah. And bouncing around, too. Even a though you had a couple bad breaks with the green where you thought you had it, it's like, Whoops! Too big of a bad bounce off the green and onto the fringe. Yep. But if you landed it near the um the hole, the holes were soft. It was soft around there. So good shot, good shooting. Um, you know, ended up with twenty under and stuff like that. You know. Right. It's not like the British Open or, or like that where you have trouble if you don't know what you're doing. You have, right, yeah. You're going to make a mistake. Yeah, you're going to end up tw uh, 20 over. <laughs> and you're gonna... with the winds going 30, 40 miles per hour and the way the wind is, and then, you know, you're hitting the ball into a bunker or, yep. of course, one of those burn, burn uh, traps. Yeah, know, and that they have. The ball, you can put the ball into the ocean, too. And that gets kind of dangerous. Yeah, that does. Uh, I don't know what golfers prefer. Do they prefer a more challenging course or they prefer somebody – a golf course that they can my they, favorite, they can play my favorite hole is sawgrass the 17th hole where if you don't do it right if you're not on the green you're in the water yep you're in the water you, that's i i haven't seen that hole so yeah i've seen it on tv it's the to me it's the most difficult part three you'll ever see in your life if you don't do it right. You could you could make it pretty bad if you keep going in the water a couple of times. Is that the famous one from Tin Cup? I think so. I know it's from Sawgrass. I know that. Yep. I, play I, it I, on my, I played it on my video game before, and I, yes, I've been in the water a few times, but, but you also have to aim it. What I always do is you aim it right, don't let the wind get to, your, get to you, and then actually I've gotten a hole in one on it once. 
yeah video game play. Oh, it's a video it game. All, it, it all depends where the wind is going. If I think the wind's going in a pretty bad direction, then I'll flip my thing go one iron higher one iron higher. If yep. I think the wind is going heavy, then I'll lower it. Yeah, okay. You know, so you don't overshoot it. Yep. So, but, um, by the way, before you go to the next topic, everybody is now out on the course. They're getting ready to resume play. Resume play. They're done with the warm-ups. Yep. They're playing right now. Yes, they are at the T. So, yep, they're at the T. They're getting a little bit of warm-ups right now. Um, yep. We should be good to go. As soon as that guy hits that air horn, we resume. All right. It so, looks here like- it comes. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it, hit it. Three, two, one. Come on. There it is. Okay, there it is. resumed. They resumed. Okay, Joe, <laughs> go ahead with your baseball that we almost didn't make it to. Almost didn't make it. Does <sighs> baseball, what can I say? They they went back to the original plan. They they just I think the players and everybody just finally gave up. They just said this is enough we're, we're not getting anywhere we we just have to make something work we give in yeah so baseball will happen thank yay for that one um yankee hat is back on uh 60 games they're going to play 60 games that's going to be a very interesting season no preseason, no preseason or anything like training that. At Just your spring local training. Cities. Yep. But uh, at one team's got a problem: the Toronto Which, Blue Jays. Yeah, and they're in Canada. Yeah, and they still haven't made the rule about that yet. And now, of course, do they want to come down to Tampa, Florida, and play? Now that's a problem too. And they've got a few people that are positive. Yep. And do they? I, I think they're expanding the rosters to. Um, 28, I believe. 28, 28 uh, players, yeah, instead of the 25. So they will expand, expand the rosters. That would help. As long as they start and they're setting up TV times and stuff um, for um, Fox and everybody to start airing these games. And but, TBS, don't forget them too. But I, yes. bet you Fox, I bet you Fox is going to be on. And FS1 are going to be on this every weekend. Uh, yep, every weekend they're going to have at least a baseball game going. So, sixty games. That's not a lot. That's no. Nope. I mean, so the you stats got, are going to be down. You people in fantasy baseball better be paying attention to what's going on. Yeah, I mean, a team could have a bad week and be out of the playoffs. Very One bad, very quickly. It mm -hmm. could happen. This is going to – I think this is going to please fans. I think this is going to um, make fans watch either, watch the games even more. They're going to be more into it because it's do or die. It's do or die situations. It, um, I mean, in a week you can go maybe five and five – and not be good enough. No, or if you could even start the season like eight and two or something like that, and then you go on a bad <laughs> losing streak, uh, you get in trouble real quick. Yeah. You, know, you go down the wrong way. Now, from the way this works, everybody's going to be playing 10 games against their division, teams in their division, and 14 combined games in the National League, uh, like East or Central or West, like that. Yep. So. And they were already talking about the Yankees are going to open up with the Washington Nationals. I said, wow, that's what, just what you need to start here. And, yeah, I see the Yankees and Dodgers are co-favorites to win the World Series already. Yep, they're co -f Yankees are favored as long as they stay healthy and people don't fall off the bench. Or get tested positive. Or test positive. More likely they fall off the bench and they mm -hmm. get injured. Uh, uh, that's just the Yankees and my feelings about them. I am a Yankee fan, but they keep on falling off the bench and getting – I mean, there's no 60-day no DL, you know, for a player right now. The only way you're going on the 60-day DL is you go on it right now or otherwise you are not playing the yeah. start of the season. So you better so, go on the 60 days now at this point. It, yep. So 
you know. Aaron now, Judge the is not. Is, the bad yeah. news is, unfortunately, despite the baseball season starting, uh, the cases are going up. Cases are going up in Florida. They're spiking. Is, I mean, it's going to hard be a hard time to bubble all these teams and players and athletes down there to Well, stop the this. one thing I'm not happy about what the San Francisco Giants are going to do is for their fans, they're going to have those paper cut-ups again that you've seen in some soccer games, which no need for it. There, it, it doesn't look like a stadium to me. It just looks like a stadium where they just sit there and look like they were drawn out of a cardboard box. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's going to be no fans. Just play the, the only games. The place that might have fans, believe it or not, if you look at it, Joe, is Wrigley Field because there are people that live in those apartments across the street from Wrigley. Yeah, they're going to watch with their binoculars. So, I mean, that's not going to create enough a home field advantage for anything. So, nope. I mean, they're they're going to see some baseball from there. That's like watching baseball from Muzzy Field from the apartments across mm-hmm. the street. Which actually, by the way, that you don't get to do that anymore either. They block those off now. Yeah. So, <laughs> unfortunately, they done that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so. I would like to see how this season's going to progress. And being as a Red Sox fan, I'm expecting just to have a, a, a good season. I know there's no Chris Sale this year. He had the Tommy John surgery. Yeah. He did lose another pitcher as well. Uh, he got traded. Um, you know, how are we going to look the outcome of this year? I don't know. I'm not going to make any predictions about it because I've, I've got a good feeling. Just keep the ball in play and don't do anything crazy. And yes, our manager is still only an interim. He's not a complete full manager yet. No, he he hasn't been given the full manager um, title, has he? No, he hasn't. I wouldn't be surprised if this year he gets one chance at it and see how <coughs> sixty games does for this so. situation. Now, will the fans be able to come back? There, there may be in the playoffs they could, but to not a full capacity, though. No, no, no. Um, like the, uh, New Britain Bees, they're, they're back. They're playing in their stadium. Uh, they're only at 25 capacity. They filled, I think they do 1,500 fans, and that's it. I mean, so. They don't even get 1,500 fans anyway, probably. Yeah, I know. That's. <laughs> They have problems doing that, but right, um, it's like the Bristol Legion games where I know they have an eight-game home stand, but I'm going to tell you now there won't be many fans going to those games. No, no, I, I think they started already. Yeah, they, they did. started this weekend. Mm-hmm. They went one and one, but now they're starting an eight-game home stand to uh, start their home seat home game. Yep, yep. So, but you know, but like I said, not like us. We probably won't be going to too many of them this year. Maybe a Connecticut tournament at the end of the year if they start opening it up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that, but, um, you know. I'll come and support them if I have to. Yeah. Just, especially now with no Bristol Blues, you might as well go to the tournament games. Like, if it's to the championship, that's when I'll probably go. Yeah, and hopefully, you know, Connecticut hasn't won a championship in a Bristol hasn't won a championship in a long since time. 2006. Yeah, so it's been a while since we yes. tasted victory. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Yep. Um, so, what do you got for it. golf? Um, Dustin Johnson just bogeyed the 16th. Ooh. So the, the lead He's is even. Now, now get this. Yep. Got Dustin Johnson's 19 under with two holes to play. Kevin Streelman is going to the 18th. He's down one, but remember, there's four other golfers out there. Still yeah. Going. Yep. So Dustin just bogey number 17, and this birdie putt is going to not make it. Nope, it's going to stop. So, um, but that's but that's what it's looking like right now. It's, as uh, Johnson's going to the 18th hole, only up one. So there could be a playoff if uh, yep. he's not smart. So, but, but we'll keep our eye on it. But like I said, Dustin, Dustin Johnson just um, – Missed one. He this bogeyed. Is, this is not the 18th for a birdie putt. Yeah. And he will get it. Okay. We'll put him to six, finish at 16 under. Six. 
So that's heating up. That's progressing. Yep. Now this is Mackenzie Hughes at the 18th. So is he going with this? This ball is going to go fairway, bounce. No, nope, bunker. Okay. Ooh. Sand trap. I, I don't think that break helped them any. Uh, I no, think that slowed down their momentum that golfers survive on. But. Yep, absolutely. But but now this is something to keep an eye on now since he dropped one. And now Streelman uh, had, doesn't know that now he's got a chance, but now he's got to try and birdie or at least no worse than a par. Yeah, no worse than a par. And he has to hope that um, Dustin Johnson gets a bogey at the 18th. Yep. Hold on one second, and then we'll uh, go to the football topic here. Well, a little bit more um, on baseball, fans coming back, maybe in the playoffs. But um, we'll see what about fans in baseball when it it, it comes to that. We'll we'll see what happens. Yep. Um, I don't think that's high priority this season. No. Mm -mm. You save it for 2021 at this point. Yeah. But just remember that legal thing that they got coming up after next year. So here we go. Yeah, that's going to be a mess. Yes, it is. All right. Before we start talking football, where are we going, Dustin Johnson? Maybe in the fairway. Okay. All right. Um, The NFL. The Uh, NFL. Problems. Yeah, a little bit. Players are not um, do, go, working out as single people. We're, we're doing them as groups. Yep, and that's causing a little problems and little, you know, I, uh, you know, that's just not working out well. It's, it's maybe it's gonna start spiking the virus. It may not, but. I, I oh, think the commissioner still says the season's a full go. The problem is the uh, exhibition opener between the Cowboys and the Steelers has been canceled. Yep, that's the Hall of Fame game. That that's been canceled before. Yeah, and but this one's this one's much. This one was a no brainer. Yeah, it, I mean they canceled that one time because they put Thompson water seal on the field and the spikes couldn't go through it. Yep, yeah, so they, 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 to break a I mean, that was, yeah, yeah. I mean, somebody screwed up and put Thompson water sale on them. Yep. Yeah. Um, now, the Hall of Fame enshrinement night, that's been postponed to next year. So there is no Hall of Fame night. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that game is mostly for the fans, anyways. So having no fans at that game, that's really, and that's just the fifth pro se- uh, a preseason game. For for the teams, so yeah, it's actually the opener. But yeah, it's the opener. The question is, what are they going to do for the preseason? I hear they may cut it down to two weeks, or are they going to decide, you know what, don't try playing it right now, just see how you do it practice and who gets cut. I I week. think they're going to um do one of those um where they they bring in both teams from uh, the league um, sides and no. they they practice together. Mm-hmm. They practice together and they play like a mini, mini football game at the end of the week. Mm-hmm. And I think they're going to do that. That that will evaluate the players just as good as the preseason game. So I think they'll do that. That that seems to be what the coaches will like and what the league will like doing. So. Yep. I, maybe two preseason games, just uh, stick something on TV before the season. But I think they'll go to the um, games where and they may televise that. Um, if they were smart, they televise that that like um, mini. During the preseason, though, there's a problem. They do all the games from on their local uh, city, uh, city local games. cities and stuff. Some but, go to national, but. There, there's a lot of preseason where they just do it, and that's when I have to – when you watch them on the computer for free, I find a way to do it. But Yeah. But I keep but, tabs on – the. you know, I'll keep tabs on the first half to see where the players are going, and sometimes I want to watch to see which players who have a chance to make the team, how they look in a game. Yep. But I, I think if they have a chance to televise something like that, they will. Just yep. um, give something, something for football fans to – 
it's an anticipation of the season, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. um, but football, <laughs> um, missing the – College football has got a little problem, though. What? College football. College football. Yeah. Football, college football is going to have a really big Clemson problem. just had more players uh, test positive. Well, they have more players to watch. They, mm-hmm. I mean, they have more colleges to, to – I mean – <laughs> that's spread out all over the United States mm-hmm. college. I mean, that that's that's a lot to um, try to control. Uh-oh. That's just what, uh, what. Okay, no, keep going. You feed it out for a second, so we're all right. Oh, okay. So um, now Texas A uh, and M had yep. twenty one, or no, Texas Tech. I'm sorry, had twenty one players have actually cleared from having the virus. So there's only two people left in that protocol. Okay. So, I mean, I think if um, we go back to football a little bit, I don't think they'll get through the full season without somebody testing positive. Mm -hmm. The only college team I know that canceled the season was Moorhead State. They were the first team to cancel their season already. Yep. Well, that's Moorhead State. I don't. Well, they were division two, I think. And I think they're from the Atlanta area. Yeah, so that's really yeah. That, well, I guarantee big time schools aren't going to lose football. Uh, college football is like a uh, thirty billion dollar a year revenue, and I don't think they're going to miss out on that. Well, I, the SEC, they, remember, there it's college football or bust down there. So yeah, so that that will filter. If they don't have a football season, they won't have a tennis season. They won't have a golf season. They won't. They they won't have a baseball season almost without the football yep. money. They, mm-hmm. it, it's too already much. Connecticut. They already um a couple teams, couple sports programs got cut. Yep. This year. Yep. So. You know, and that's yeah. too bad. It, it is too bad. It is too bad. To, um, that. It happens, but football is a big generator for colleges. Yep. It just, it just is. It's the most popular sport, and it makes the most money. Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. Um, before we go to basketball, let me see what we're doing here. Because yep. the NBA has set their guidelines set. They or- have set the guidelines. They've um, started. They set a date to start. They set schedules for the um, preseason matchups. Each playoff team is going to have eight play, um, preseason games. They're going to um, – that's for seeding and stuff like that. So, I mean, they they got pretty creative with the um, preseason games. I mean – they stuck right off the bat. They stuck LeBron versus uh, L, um, the Clippers. The oh, big, yeah, and the Sacramento uh, Kings, too. They're, they're keeping it like a city rivalry here. Well, I think they did that because the big <laughs> L.A. markets and stuff like that, they they wanted to kick this off. At, and, I mean, they kicked it off with Boston versus um, Milwaukee. I, I, that could be a Eastern Conference final. Final you know? matchup. Yep. Yep. So I believe um, teams like LA will take um, these eight preseason games pretty lightly for seeding and stuff. Uh, I mean, LeBron just needs a couple games to probably get back into form, get back in the rhythm. Uh, He's going to LA. Yep. LA is going to miss Avery Bradley. He's going to be doing the Black Lives Matter thing. Yeah, there's another going. one that bowed out today, I believe, the one for the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah. He bowed uh, out today, did too. Did Kyrie, Kyrie per- Irvin? Was no, Ky- let me double-check, but it wasn't Irvin, I don't think. But um, the L.A. Um, Lakers did pick up J.R. Um, Smith. Chandler's the one, Joe, who oh. opted out to remain with his family. Okay, okay. That's their choice. They – that's their choice to do that. And um, uh, L.A. picks up J.R. Smith. 
as long as he um, passes the ball to uh, LeBron mm -hmm. and doesn't do that whole mess up thing that he did in the <clears throat> finals one year, I think LeBron will um, welcome him back pretty well. So, well, I, I yep. mean, he messed up in the NBA finals pretty bad one year, mm -hmm. that year. Yep, absolutely. So, what do we got uh, on the TV? Okay. Uh, oh, Hughes just got a nice little putt there for Birdie. So now he goes to seven under. Dustin Johnson hard. Yep. So, so Mackenzie Hughes finished at 17 under with a great birdie putt on 18. Okay. Um, now this one. Now this is Streelman. This is for him for Birdie. And he needs to make this. Well, actually, no. Dustin's got one more hole to go. Yeah. He's going to the 18th. Yeah. Oh, he did not put any into that. Oops. Go, 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 go. No. No. Ah. no, he went right. Now he's got to make this for par. He cannot afford to, to, to blow, this, blow this. this shot. Yeah, no. Nope. Or otherwise, Dustin Johnson's going to realize he can bogey the 18th. Yep. It's all the pressure. I believe it's seven million dollars on the line, or something like that. Mm -hmm. That'd be crazy. So hard, hard. Yep. So he's done. He's at eighteen under. He finished. So that's okay, eighteen so. under. As long as he, Dustin Johnson, um, you know, pars the eighteen. No, well, this is he's only at the seventeen. So oh, he's, he's still on the seventeen. Up. He's not done yet. This is a par putt right now. All right. This is a par putt. Everybody quiet on the green. Yeah, no drum roll. Yeah, no, no drum roll. No, no. no, he parted. it. Part it. Okay. He's going Still to 19 the, under. Yep, with one hole to play. If worst case scenario, we stay on the air an extra couple of minutes tonight. <laughs> yeah. Couple of minutes will still follow. We still got thirty minutes to go anyway. Left anyway, so that's fine. Because yep. we started, so we started late intentionally, so in case this did happen. Yeah, so we can bring you the up to date, yep. and this may air two weeks after this tournament. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, depending so. how that goes, but so um, back to the NBA. Um, wrapping up this um, plan. I mean. I, I believe I'm worried a little bit with this. The, the commission little, says it's all it's all systems go unless it continues to go, but I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I I think it's what the season's going to happen. Right, but if it starts going a little bit more crazy, they he could tell them, you know, we have to shut it down again. There's a um, it could happen, but I doubt it. I, I doubt it too. Um, I I think they'll. We'll keep the players in Florida, in Walt Disney World, bottled up. I, I, I believe they can control 15 players from each team and keep that situation uh, under control. I, I, oh. I, they can keep those players safe. As long as the players <coughs> go out of, you know, it do something. It all comes down to as long as the NBA players don't start testing positive for what yeah. it comes down to. I think they can keep things sanitized, people wearing masks, social distancing. Uh, they'll do well with that. I, um, it's like, you know, it's like in boxing, the last couple of fights that I've seen, every boxing fight that comes to an end, here comes the sanitizing of everything. Yep. They break out the – they've done that in uh, the UFC fighting too. You know, yep. everything um, um, comes out, everything sanitized, boom. Yep. It really got things rolling. As long as the players don't break the quarantine bubble for the NBA, they'll do fine. I mean, they're they're going to go to these hotels and they're going to get pampered. Yep. I mean, they're going to have everything handed to them that they want. Whatever they want, they're getting pampered. Right. And don't feel bad for them that they're going to be trapped in Florida. They're going to be pampered there. They're going to be fine. It's just, you know, unfortunately, their families don't get to go on this trip. They have to I, stay home. I, I feel for them. I, I really do, having no family around them for a couple months while they do their jobs. Unless the teams get eliminated, then you get to come home and see them sooner than you think. Yeah. 
I, I mean, I, so teams will get eliminated when they start the playoffs and stuff like that. So, I mean, I don't think LeBron James is going to worry about his family too much if nope. he's trying to win an NBA championship. Yep. So he, he should be fine with that. Yep. All right, good. Justin All right. Johnson put his, first, his opening tee shot is about maybe 150-something, about maybe 130, 150 yards to the flag stick going on a second shot. All his, right. His opening shot went in the fairway at the 18th. So he's looking good. Yep, as long as he pars. He has to, he can't do any yes. for the par to win. So. Yep. Um, I guess we did pretty good. We went this long without talking about hockey, but um, let me. Yeah, you can, you can follow up on the hockey. We, can go we are down to five hub cities now remaining where they're going to host now. Um, we're down to Chicago, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Toronto, and Edmonton. Vancouver was just recently uh, eliminated from the hub city. Uh, it, it's going to sound like to me, I wouldn't be surprised if this is going to wind up going in Canada both directions because Los Angeles is spiking. Uh, Vegas is on that rise too. And I think Chicago has been okay, but something's telling me we're going to be playing these up in Canada for this tournament. Well, I, um, I think um, playing them um, in Canada and keeping the travel distance um, less will probably benefit the NHL, not exposing players to other states and stuff like that. Yeah, because we are only – we're not too far away. I think we're only like 12, about maybe two weeks away from uh, a start having of a training camp, and yep. they said it's all good to go. And like I said, the, the, the cases in that one right now, Tampa Bay had their facility closed. They reopened. <laughs> Yep. Austin Matthews, I believe, is the only one right now, or he's the only major player that's going through a um, protocol. But that's been it so far. Okay. So, so they're going to they're gonna start like the NBA. Aren't they going to start with eight season prison games? Or nope, are they starting like, full? No, no, no. They're going to start 24 teams. It's going to go right. It's, it's going to be the playoffs. You're going to have four. You're going to have um, the – you're going to start basically with teams playing each other in the first round three out of five. We didn't get a bye. Okay. Um, and then the winners of that series will go on to the next round where it'll be four out of seven. Now, if you didn't see the NHL lottery draft last night or it was Friday night. No, I'll talk um, about that. I would like bit. to. Um, there were eight picks. <clears throat> and the way it was going, we don't know who was going to get the – the, the pick out of the whole thing. Um, so Ottawa got two picks because San Jose gave up a, uh, gave up they, their pick for they Eric traded Carlson. Them. Okay, they traded him. And so what the number one pick is, and it came out to be, here we go again, we got to do another lot of, another uh, lottery. Somebody who, who gets eliminated in this uh, qualifying tournament is going to get a chance to have a top pick. Top okay. Pick. You're going to have your number one pick. So, and let me relate that to you because I know to some people it's like, what the heck is that? Yeah, what is that? So I'm going to explain it to you. Explain it. Uh, you, uh, you, you know the um, hockey scene better than mm -hmm. I do. Is there a um, college kid or anything that's um, – College kid, a kid from the junior league. Is, um, yeah, junior league or something like that. Oh, That's Canadian going to be a high even though, um, even though lottery. Unfortunately, the, yeah, even though the Canadian league is in a heap of trouble, and it's not because of the virus; it's for something more serious. Okay, um, about, I don't uh, know what that this... it's it's hazing and sexual stuff. Unfortunately. Okay. So I did not um, know Canadians did that, but I guess they do. <laughs> and Joe, I'm going to yeah, and yeah, I, I think yeah, I did put this on the page. Um. Okay, the number one pick of the 2020 NHL draft will be determined by the second phase of the NHL lottery draft after the results of the first phase on Friday. The team will be the one of, of the eight that are eliminated from the Stanley Cup qualifiers and will be determined to have a second drawing to be held before the start of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Each of the eliminated teams will have a 12.5% chance of winning the number one pick. So basically, they get to do this again. Okay. 
the Los Angeles Kings uh, obviously got the second pick of the draft, and then Ottawa has two picks. One of them, of course, was due to the um, San Jose. Yep, Detroit. Detroit. Yep, Detroit. So, and the Detroit Red Wings had a great chance to get their number one pick. Instead, they went to number four. So, uh, yeah. So, so it's very interesting how this is going to go. Interesting. Is it? Is there a um, breakout player or any kind of superstar? Is there another Wayne Gretzky on the way there from could these be, younger ones? There could be. Kids? We've had the people like Sidney Crosby, Connor McDavid come into this draft. Um, there have been many players before. Actually, believe it or not, I actually have a set of 25 hockey cards, believe it or not, who are rookies. And I can tell you, if I can put my light on here real quick, I can go. show you my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I got Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> um, we have, um, like, for example, uh, Jack. Let me, let me see if I can point this. Yeah, Jack okay. Jack Hughes, um, he, was, he was a rookie, came out this year. He played for the New Jersey Devils. Um, do I have another one? I thought there were two Hughes that came and played this year. Hold on a second. I wonder if I – yes, I do. His brother, Quinn Hughes of the yep. Vancouver Canucks. <clears throat> we're showing oh, hockey these, cards. Why not? It's an it's why, an not? why not? Why not? We showed a cat on this show. Why, why, why not? Why um, not? These are the, some of these players who were drafted from last year. There were about maybe six, seven players who actually went into the uh, played hockey right away as a rookie season. I will tell you both. You uh, the one from New Jersey, Jack Hughes, had an okay season. His brother's going to the playoffs. Quinn Hughes. He was a very good defenseman this year. Okay. You know, okay. so he looked pretty decent. And then the uh, number two pick, here he comes. I'm going to try and say this right. Capo Caco for the New York oh, Rangers. Yeah. Nice name. <laughs> yeah, that's, a nice <laughs> that's a nice name for New York. I, I guarantee the um, announcement for the uh, New York Rangers. Will, yeah, Joe, um, I try to, uh, Joe, I try to pronounce his name about 15 different ways. Yeah, I, Capo, I'm sure. Capo Caco, here's the card. Okay, there you go. But <laughs> you know, but but it's so successful what some of these players will do. If you train hard enough, you know, and if yep. you give you that type of material, you're going to be good to play in the NHL right away. There are a lot of managers who say, you know what, go back to the juniors for another year or two, develop and get ready. Or if you're a college person, don't try and rush and come back to the league. Try try and go out at least until you're after your junior year. If you sign a contract after your season's over, I believe we're the only. Them and baseball are the only two sports who will come out right away and and uh, play get a pro contract. And play, oh not yeah, like from NBA. high school. Um, mm -hmm. um, no, we don't do baseball. That. Baseball's from high school. Will um, start trying to sign you. So baseball's oh. from high school. Mm -hmm. Hockey and, won't do that. No, hockey won't do that. Other sports, you know, no, won't the do M that. Basketball, they make you wait until the end of the NBA season. They don't let you immediately both. Yeah, it's one and done. It's mm -hmm. one and done rule. Correct. But, you know, NFL, same thing. They're very strict now. Yeah. I, I don't know if baseball will probably change that since they are um, eliminating their minor league teams and stuff. They, and might, they might after they that may have to reassess um, how many rounds they actually have, how many kids they actually want to um, look at. I, yep. I think I think that's gonna um, probably benefit the collegiate leagues like the um, Bristol Blues okay. and the um, New Britain Bees. Yep. Uh, okay. I, I believe players will latch on to them and um, start playing for them. And scouts are just gonna have to go to those games from uh, professional teams and look at the players. That's yep. all. That's all. You're right. All right. Guess what? We have what? a winner. Dustin, Dustin Johnson. Johnson just part the 18th to win. He had two. He needed two putts, and he got them both. Nice. So that's it's that's done. the winner. There's your winner. Winner for the Travelers Championship. The championship. Travelers Championship. Congratulations, Dustin. Dustin, 20 under or 20, 19 under. 19 under. He bogeyed. 19. He bogeyed the uh, 16th when it happened. So made a little bit. Yeah. We got one more golfer still to go, but um, he's going for his um, thirty uh, right now. Yep. But and then, but that is your that is your golf tournament. I'm glad this rain delay didn't stay long. This is Brendan Todd to finish for par. Well, 
Yep, yeah, here we go. For par, everybody quiet on the green. Nope, he didn't par. He's going to oh. make bogey instead. Oh, man, that, that's a that's maybe $10,000 or $20,000 less of a prize. Yep. Here you that, go. Well, he finished with a 75, so he didn't do too well today. Well, he's still. Four over. That's still maybe, that's still like $50,000 or something like that for four days of golf. Yep, but yep, this is it. Dustin Johnson's your winner. Kevin Spielman finished the second, and then Mackenzie Hughes and Mackenzie Hughes and Will Gordon tied for the last uh, for third place. And there's our and Webb Simpson, Simpson still leads the FedEx Cup standings. Okay, Dustin Johnson moves up to twenty second with the victory today. All right, as they head to Michigan. Yes. Yeah, I know. I don't know why they want to play play a golf course in Detroit, but they do. Yeah, well, wait, wait, wait till they go to California for the PJ Championship in August in San Francisco, California. Yeah. Hopefully, everything's going well there. Hopefully, there's no earthquake and California goes bye bye. But hey, yeah, well, or or if uh, the virus still keeps going up, so yep. <clears throat> but but. Um, anyway, we do need to talk about, we did have our first sport in the United States that started up again for soccer, soccer wise. Yeah. Uh, it was the NWSL, the women's soccer started up yesterday in Utah. Okay. And, um, they, yes, they did do a, they did take a knee before the game started. Of course you knew that was coming. Yeah, it's fine. Don't, take a knee. Do it before do the it before starts. the game. It's a it's a difficult subject. We've, we've everybody, talked about it. Doing it yep. Everybody's doing it. I mean, I watched um, on Crackle. There's um, the Tim Tebow movie, where um, mm -hmm. Tim Tebow was um, doing Tim Tebow, the Tebow, you know, when yep. he took a knee yep. for his his faith and stuff. And everybody, yep. some people didn't like it. Some people liked it. Some people, you, you're never gonna please everybody. It's mm -hmm. very hard to please everybody. So. Yep, of course. But you know, I'm happy the league got going and stuff. I did. I did watch the pretty much of that North Carolina Portland game yesterday. They had it on CBS and they won it in the 85th minute. So. Yep. Um, women's soccer very popular here in the U.S. You know, the U.S. Um, women's soccer teams are very good, and they're far they're far beyond the men. I mean, for what they in talent, uh, not in, ta in talent wise, and in, in their you know, in their sport. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, that's good for women. That's that's good for women. This, I mean, that's good soccer. I've watched many women's soccer games at CCSU. It's, yep. it's very thrilling. You know, soccer is a very easy sport to watch. Not a lot of commercials. Uh, done in done in two hours and maybe twenty five minutes done over with, and it's good. I, yep. I'm happy to hear that. Yep, I am too. So I'm glad that that's gotten underway. The Major League Soccer starts July eighth in yep. in, Florida, in Walt Disney World too. Everybody's in Disney World. Oh, I know. I know, e e even though there's a lot of uh, workers and, empl and employees who do not want to go. Uh, go back to work in Disneyland. Actually, if you heard already, they're not going back yet. They've been delayed. Yep, they've been delayed to um, open up. Disneyland, not Disney World, though. Yeah, well, I think that's both the same thing, <laughs> or it's a well, little bit. Disney, of the same. Well, some parts of Disney is supposed to open July 11th, so if they want to stop them from opening, you better do it now. Yeah, I, I think um, having everybody's down there, the WNBA down there, the N the W uh, the NBA down there, the soccer leagues down there. Um, I think that's fine. They'll keep the athletes away from the public. They'll they'll stick them in their own bubbles. They'll they'll be fine. 
They'll stick in the, well, they'll probably keep them at separate hotels. I don't see, I don't see them staying in the Disney hotels. I, yeah, they're supposed to stay at some of the Disney yeah, hotels. Yeah, but some of those next people, the, but the other tourists, though, are I not going to be allowed to stay No, there. no, no, no. They're, they're shutting down the whole hotel and saying, the NBA players, this is your hotel yeah. for a couple months. You right. live here. Other people, go find another resort. Yeah. There's people plenty of resorts down. down there. I I. I don't think that's a problem for no. uh, room and stuff. Uh, I mean, even our um, our our hotel in Bristol, they're um, they're doing a twenty-five million dollar reservation renovation renovation yep. here. So we're gonna have some more room down here too. So oh, abs- <coughs> absolutely. So um, anything another- else? What else we got? Yeah, um, we got a few minutes. Actually, we, yeah, we do. The the um, believe it or not, NASCAR from the Poconos has resumed now. They had a rain delay, and they they're actually I think they just finished stage one. I think. Okay, um, stage one. They still got stage two. They already did the truck series this morning. They did the Xfinity series earlier this afternoon. Now they're doing this race. I um, think NASCAR NASCAR is going well. The popularity is going. More people are watching. They've had fans at their events. They're, oh, um, wow. And they're actually in the yellow uh, caution flag right now. Caution because flag. Nothing, nothing because of a crash, but because they had rain. Uh, okay. The track is pretty, pretty Wet. slick, and they can see the smoke coming from the rain <laughs> from the sun. All right. So, um, and then next weekend, the 4th of July, you've got the doubleheader with the IndyCar Series and yep. the Brickyard. No, yeah, there are no fans. No fans for, for those. No, no they've already announced that. But um, I think but NASA we're, start, we're, start, we're starting to get this stuff back together. Yeah, I mean, everything's start. The momentum is good. Everything is just a couple more things need to click to stay. Everything keep on going. Nobody mm-hmm. needs to start po- testing positive. Uh, or, or you could be the people like in New Zealand right now. They've actually been holding rugby games. They've actually had uh, 25% capacity of fans go to the games right now. I've seen a little bit of it. Yeah. Live last night. Of course, that's when you go to sleep. But Yeah, that's when I go to sleep. I'm not up watching rugby like you are. I'm, no, I'm I don't computer. watch rugby very often, but sometimes I will watch it just to see what, what, what the fans are doing and, and but, the capacity and all that. I believe sports are at a – it's at a good momentum here. Every every sport is at a good level. It's – baseball finally has their act together. Football, it looks like they're going to start to – going to have a little bit of a mess if it keeps going, though. It, it, I, they're not going to miss out at um, $68 billion a year revenue. I believe they – They'll find a way to make the well, football the, season. Well, the commissioner says that he thinks he can still put fans in the stands, but what they're going to do is they're going to put advertising uh, to cover the seats, which it does not surprising. Well, that's fine. That's fine. If they want to yeah. advertise for TV, that's fine. That the, the, the Little League covers us up with um, uh, advertising in the yes, field. Yes, we know. That drives us crazy. Yes, it does. It's, but that's – that's another way they can make money. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. if somebody wants to pay somebody $500,000 just to put a um, tarp on some seats, you know, more power to them. Yep, because now especially when next year we have this little league tournament, there's probably going to be a big-time ceremony moment. Yeah, there's uh, going to be a big-time ceremony moment. Everything. as long as this thing keep, gets under control, they may welcome us all back, or they may tell us, nope, it's going to not be full capacity next year. Yep, or something. Hopefully everything's fixed by it next year. Hopefully everything's back to normal. But yeah, if well. it's not, uh, uh, me, me and you are still going to be on air and talking. So. Yeah, well, of course, or, or the worst-case scenario, you bring your – you bring your production stuff with you. We we do a we, we do a, a sports show live from from the field. Yeah, point. we can, we should. <laughs> we, should. we may happen. We do a live sports show from the field. Mm-hmm. That, that event, would be eventually, fun. you never know. We could get told. We may have to go to the studio and start recording all this too. Eventually, 
Uh, I believe so too. Um, we could do a f um, Thursday night, maybe um, recording. Yeah, if we have to. Yep. If we course. have to. Yep, I mean, it all depends on. I mean, the they're down. renovating the studio now at Nutmeg Television. There's going to be a whole bunch of new toys and stuff. They got. Yeah, I, I can't tell you the full details online no, because they want to. They want to keep you a secret, course. but I'm very, I, I'm very excited about going back to the studio. There's going to be a whole bunch of new toys and stuff. You to make never know. They could put me back on that show again like they did once already. So Yeah, they'll put you on the, the crack of Dawn. I, I'm, Dawn's been asking about you. She's kind of, um, you know, she's kind of doing her own show. She needs a little help. I, I, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to help her out with some camera work and stuff like that and help out her show a little bit. Yeah, but. Yeah. For our show, we're doing fine right now. Yeah, yeah, we're fine I mean, from our own homes. We're good. From our own homes, bringing you sports up to date. And, you know, this is what the sportsmen do. We analyze, we give you what we think about the sports, and we yep. update you. I mean, yeah, and especially like we did today with the golf today, that's why we're staying a couple minutes extra because – Yep. Because of the golf tournament, and golf especially tournament. worked out perfectly. The six fifteen restart, so yeah. And so with six, and with six golfers still out there on the course, you know yeah. now they can go get their scores. Dustin Johnson can hold his trophy, and then board on a plane tomorrow. They'll probably spend the night here in town, and then probably yeah the back to the to Detroit. Like a two hour drop, a two hour plane flight tomorrow. So yeah, they'll be they'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a very successful tournament. Yep, no, no doubt about it. I mean, I would think that probably out of all the tournaments so far, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's been low, but I think this one was the better so far of the three with everybody staying within distance. Yep, yep. I, I think Connecticut did it, you know, we did a fine job. It's a, it's a good example. And you would think everybody would come back next year more. Oh, yeah. Uh, everybody left in good spirits. Everybody talked positive about the course. Everybody – Everybody's got to come back next year. Yeah, it's too I mean, bad Tiger the, Woods couldn't come, but, you know. Yeah, I know. We could plead on this show for Tiger Woods to come Not to Connecticut happen. at least once in your career, come to Connecticut. That's he, would only, he would only come if it was a, if it was a chance in the uh, playoff standings. Then he would have to. Yeah. He would have to be forced to come. Mm-hmm. If, but if, it's it, usually if it wasn't, not. If, he, if it's like a tournament that he won't, then he's like, nope, I'm staying put. Which he still has hasn't really played a tournament yet this year. Actually, no, he played one this year so far. One, yep. yep, yeah, yeah. So, okay, what? we've talked a lot of golf. We talked a lot of everything today. Yep, we uh, we we covered the basics, and um, we're gonna see what we're gonna keep track of this week. And like I said, for our special show on July third on Friday. <laughs> Uh, we will mention about the fireworks and the, uh, everything else in the United States and everything yeah. else in between. We're going to give you a good special show. We're going to. No, but we promise you, you it, it won't. There, it has nothing to do about the president, so we can we can tell you. Yeah, we, we, we we'll we'll cut out the president. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this has been Joe Musil for and the Sportsman Show. And I'm Jason Archie with... Carolus to finish it off, signing off. I hope everybody has a good week. We'll see Yep. Have a good week. Stay safe. Enjoy stage. Enjoy sports. All yep. right. See you, folks. Good night.